Last night on MasterChef. Here they come, here they come. Let's do this. The food truck challenge put Stacy in control. Bread team all the way. As her plan to get rid of Monty was on course. Or is David going to freak out? Such a child. This day keeps getting better. But when Monty passed the pressure test with flying colors. Those were incredible. Thank you so much. Anna was the one eliminated. Anna, please put your apron on your station. Tonight, a mystery box with a mystery guest. Go get him, Graham. Badass. As the contestants cook alongside a Michelin star chef. He's one of the most talented chefs on the planet. And when the home cooks face a new challenge, ah! disaster strikes. Look at the mess. See this? And after one elimination, there is a shocking twist. They're going to cut two people? What? Good morning. It's down to 11, and we're the best home cooks of America. Welcome, 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 welcome. Sometimes I look at these mystery boxes and wonder, what would a true master chef do with those ingredients? Oh, my gosh. Well, today, we're going to find out. No way, dude. That's awesome. We have invited a Michelin star chef a true visionary in the world of food to cook alongside of you all. Woo! Sweet. Go get him, Graham. Woo! Please welcome all the way from Chicago, a legend of modern cuisine, Master Chef Graham Elliott. Do we know what we're in for with this guy? He's one of the most talented chefs on the planet. Don't worry, you guys aren't competing against me. That would be totally unfair. We just wanted to give you an amazing opportunity to see what a true professional chef could do in one hour without any advantage of any preparation. And no, for the record, I don't know what's in the boxes. And remember, the person with the best dish will get a huge advantage in the next challenge. That's badass, man. Chef Elliot, please take to your station. Aye, aye. Woo! Right. Woo! Are you ready to see what's under those amazing boxes? Yes. Yes, Chef. One, two, three. Wow. Whoa. I couldn't believe my eyes. I see what looks like a roadkill. You have the most amazing rabbit. The rabbit. Cape gooseberries. Purple Brussels sprouts. Mataki mushrooms. Rams. Rams. Forbidden rice. Chorizo. Ginger. Wow. And a heavy whipping cream. In addition, you have access to the stable box for other ingredients. I'm definitely going to be in the top three, and I'm feeling very confident now. Just knowing that I have a rabbit in front of me, and I could do it three, four, or five ways. You've got 60 minutes to create a stunning dish, and your time starts now. Going in this mystery box challenge, the person to beat is still Becky, because she's been in the top three of all the mystery box challenges. If I can kick Becky's ass, then that means I'm that much better. Do you think a lot of them have used that before? Probably not. Butchering's very difficult, it's very small, very delicate, overcooked, dry. A lot of jeopardy here. Ah, what do I do? I would make a really nice rabbit pot pie. I would make an incredible frittata and roast a whole rabbit around the uh, frittata, like yeah. uh, porchetta stuffed with mm. eggs. The whole idea of putting Graham in the kitchen with us, cooking side by side, is really to show us how a real chef thinks. It's intimidating. Graham can possibly put something up that just makes us look stupid. Right, Graham. Yes, yeah. How are you feeling? Amazing. I can't wait to see what you are going to be cooking over the next 55 minutes in yeah. comparison to what they're doing. Nothing crazy, literally. I mean, it's a mystery box. It's being able to, uh, you know, utilize these ingredients to the best that they can. Oh! 
Just kidding. Oh, just trying to scare you guys. So what's the difference between the way you run your station and some of these amateur cooks? Like, what do you do differently? Why are you more efficient? I think the biggest thing is to constantly clean, wipe down. I like to have my knife right here exactly where I can use it all the time. Being able to just grab and go. Good Great. Luck. Thank you. Thank you. I'm a little intimidated. I've never butchered a rabbit. I don't know what the best way is to cook it, so I'm kind of trying two different ways, hoping that one of them is the right way. <laughs> Josh, hey sir, what are you doing? I'm doing a rabbit paella. Rabbit paella. And where is the rice? The rice is right here, and I don't even know what forbidden rice is. Oh. Oh God, how am I gonna make this black rice work? It's gonna turn everything else black. The carrots, the chorizo, the ramps, just ruin the colors that I plan for my dish. So I want to just talk to you about the rice first. Good luck. Right now, I'm, I'm getting the stock reduced. I'm going to make a sauce with this. I'm going to either stuff the uh, leg or I'm just going to sear off the loins. So I'm going to do two different things and see which one tastes the best. 40 minutes gone, 20 minutes to go. Hi, right, Mike. How are you doing? Good, Chef. My grandmother used to cook rabbit stew all the time, so I've got that going right now. Just backup plan is I'm going to pan sear a leg, finish it off, serve it with rice. You sit in the middle. When are we going to see you break through? Today, oh, Chef. Good luck. Thank you, Chef. Nice and tasty. So nice to see Graham. Obviously using the carrots. Looks like he's doing a carrot puree there. Beautiful. And it looks like he's utilizing every cut of that rabbit. I mean, that's really what a true chef looks like in the kitchen. 58 minutes gone. Two minutes to go, guys. Finish those dishes. Let's go. This is it, guys. Come on, put it on the plate. Man, I do not know how to plate at all. Clarity and vision. Come on. What is he doing? Graham, he has nothing on the plate yet. Last 60 seconds. Graham, if this dish is not completed, you are leaving the MasterChef kitchen. Graham, where are you going? He's going. Graham, Graham! Last 60 seconds. He has nothing on the plate yet. Graham, where are you going? He's going. Graham, do not give up. Come on, Graham. With the clock ticking down, our home cooks and master chef Graham Elliott are racing to complete their dishes before time runs out. He's got something on the fridge. What is that? He's, He's done, done a dessert. dessert as well. Oh, my God. 90 Please. seconds, nothing, and all of a sudden he comes out with a bloody dessert. And now, look at it. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and stop. Hands in the air, Graham Elliott. Well done. Woo! Woo! They look incredible. It smells fantastic. Chef Graham, please come up with your dishes. Wow. It looks beautiful. Thank you, Chef. I mean, it looks like a dish that could be planted any three Michelin star restaurant anywhere in the world. It looks stunning. I appreciate it. I would like all of you to come down and have a look at this, please. You've got to. Oh, my goodness. Did a carrot puree and a salad of different shaved, marinated, pickled carrots and utilized all the parts of the rabbit. So I've got the loin, the rack, the kidney, the bacon or the belly flap and some of the liver. I also did a fennel panna cotta with a little bit of candied fennel branch, fennel fronds, and cape gooseberries. Wow. Gorgeous. I'm looking at Graham's dish, and it's just beautiful. All the colors are popping. It's really like art on a plate. Wow, well, that's yeah. Great. Back to your stations. Once the contestants have tasted Graham's dish, our master chef judges now take one final look at the home cook's dishes before deciding on tonight's top three. The winner of the mystery box will receive a major advantage in the next round. The first dish we'll be tasting had great plating, really nice execution, had that wow factor, and it looked amazing. That dish 
belongs to Frank. Well done. Really well done. I look at Frankie's dish and it looks rustic as hell. There's like a bunch of lines on the plate and a bunch of the same colors. There's no diversity. Talk us through it, please. Okay, so you have the tenderloins that I crusted with caraway seeds, lemon zest, some ginger, and I just hand roasted them. The leg was deboned, pounded out, and then I stuffed it with the top of the ramps, a little bit of chorizo. Pounding out the leg and stuffing them, and that's a bold move. It looks great, it tastes great, and everything works. Delicious. Thank really you so good much. Chef. Well done. Wow. You know, you look at a sauce, you can just tell by looking at it that it's got the right balance. It's not over-reduced, it's not extracted, it doesn't have a skin on it. It smelled great. It's really, really good. Thanks, Joe. Might take it to the top. I think the coolest thing on this plate is the fact that you did that leg. Cool. Good job. Thanks, it's really man. good. Really good. Well done. Thank you. The second home cook who made it into the top three. They used the rabbit legs. They used the forbidden rice. And the cook on the rabbit looks really perfect. It really impressed us. That person is... Cowboy Mike. Bring it up. You're kidding me. Holy crap. Yeehaw! Top three, baby! First time for everything, Chef. What do you have here? I did the rice and a little bit of rabbit stock. I started with the idea that I was going to do a stew. I knew about 20, 30 minutes into it that wasn't going to work. So I incorporated a little bit of chorizo, a little bit of ramen into rice, sauteed that for a minute, and then cooked it off with the rabbit. What we love about this dish is the caramelization. And when I cut it open, it should be like this kind of very perfect white, but there should still be able to see the moisture in the rabbit leg. Right. Think you got it? I hope so. Wow. That's worth the price of admission right there. <laughs> really good. Thank you, sir. One of your best dishes. Congratulations. Very Thank good. you. Moist. Yeah, very good. Listening, it's shining. Cowboy Mike. Feels good to be here, sir. I hope so. <laughs> you absolutely cooked the leg beautifully, which is the hardest cut to do. You really nailed it. Thank you, Chef. Good job. Much. Thank you. Great job, Mike. Thank you. Good. We're going to be tasting one more dish. This dish was put together with finesse. It was oozing professionalism. Congratulations. <laughs> Becky. Oh, yes. Well done. Uh, Becky. I am so sick of hearing Becky's name. It's so annoying, and I'm actually sick and tired of, like, Becky. Welcome back to the top three. Oh, thank you, Chef. You've never won a mystery box yet. After I butchered it, I took the saddle and the two tenderloins and the upper arms and I put those in the pressure cooker with a little bit of chicken stock and some of the rendered chorizo. Nice sear on the rabbit. Thank you. Cooked to perfection. <sighs> Listening, moist. But the glaze was the one that got us because it was almost like it had been cooking for three or four hours. It's delicious. I mean, it really is. Thank you. It's restaurant quality, um, without a shadow of doubt. Thank you, Chef. When you cut into this, I mean, you can see how juicy this is. Yeah. Does that make you happy? I'm very happy. Me too. This might be your lucky rabbit's foot. I hope so. I couldn't believe the leg. You guys are amateurs, and today you cook like pros. It's the best feeling in the world to have these guys who make dishes like Graham did tell you this is impressive, this is an amazing dish. The winner has a huge advantage 
in the next stage of this competition. I'm a bit of an underdog. I think I kind of woke everybody up a little bit, and they realized that cowboy can cook. The dish that stood out to all three of us. This is my third time being in the top three. Hopefully they can see how much I want this and how much this means to me. Well done. Congratulations goes to... The winner has a huge advantage in the next stage of this competition. In today's Mystery Box Challenge, the top three dishes have already been tasted. Frank's seared loin and stuffed rabbit leg. Mike's pan-seared rabbit legs with rice. And Becky's braised rabbit leg with chorizo. Congratulations goes to... <laughs> Becky. Good job, Becky. Finally. <laughs> Third time lucky. Third time's a charm. Well done. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Great finesse. The balance. We were struggling to, to fault anything. Are you ready? I am so ready. To take on board your huge advantage. Yes. Let's go. Congratulations. Okay. Well done. Thank you. Uh, great job. Thank Let's you. go. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, she's jumping up and down and screaming and hollering and pumping her fist and all that stuff. And, you know, it was ridiculous. Oh, my God. I can't believe it. Looks amazing, dude. I know. Thank you. Thank you. It's really good. I'm really shocked you weren't up there for real. Unfound territory for you. As the winner of the Mystery Box Challenge, Becky is now in control of the elimination test. The theme of the challenge has been selected by the judges. At the end of this elimination test, at least one home cook will be leaving the MasterChef kitchen. Today's challenge is all about the tools of the trade. Oh, okay. The first piece of equipment is Italian, and it's rock hard. Okay. It is the pizza stone. Oh. So if you don't have a pizza oven that goes to 900 degrees, you really should have a pizza stone. Because it retains heat and moisture, it can deliver you a crispy crust pizza in your home kitchen. The second piece of equipment comes from China. It's used for frying, poaching, searing, smoking, and so much more. A wok. Awesome. OK. And the last piece of kitchen equipment is used to make some of the world's most favorite foods. French fries, onion rings, calamari, tempura. It is an incredible fryer. Now, Becky, you have no immunity today. You will be participating in this challenge. but. It comes with good news. First of all, you get to choose which piece of equipment you'd like to use, and then you decide on which piece of equipment your opponents will use. This advantage is not something that comes easily, so I need to choose something that I'm going to be familiar with, that I'm going to be able to create a great dish with. What's the piece of equipment that you think you can excel with? I'm going to choose for myself the deep fryer. The deep fryer, wow. For your fellow competitors, mm -hmm. what are you giving them? I'm choosing this device because it's going to create maybe some more issues for some of the chefs that they haven't dealt with before. And for that, I'm choosing. Station. Here we are. Oof. A master chef must be able to master every piece of equipment there is. We showed Becky three kitchen tools. Since she does not have immunity today, her advantage was choosing which piece of equipment she'll be working with and which one the rest of you will use. So today I picked for myself the deep fat fryer. And here's what Becky picked for the rest of you. A pizza stone. What am I going to do with a pizza stone in under an hour? I'm pretty sure Becky wants me out of the competition. Becky wants everybody out of the competition. You have 60 minutes to make one amazing dish utilizing the pizza stone. And for at least one of you, it'll be the last dish you ever cook in the MasterChef kitchen. Wow.
Your time starts now. We have 60 minutes to create something using the pizza stone. It does not have to be pizza. You can just cook on it. I still can't find the stupid olive. I can't remember my recipe for a damn pizza dough. I'm scrapping the pizza. I'm cooking lobster. Wow. Interesting one, this one. Mm hmm I think that Becky made a very aggressive and strategic move in choosing the pizza stone for everybody. I mean, yeah. certainly, she's going to set herself apart from the yeah. rest. Yeah. The first thing now is getting that dough on, activating the yeast, mm -hmm. and getting that dough working. I would make a stunning pizza. I would roll that dough so thin, I'd put it through the machine, almost like a pasta dough. Oh, really? So it literally crisps and bubbles, and mm -hmm. keep that nice, crisp edge to the pizza. Right, Becky. Hello, Chef. What are you doing? Uh, I'm doing a tempura style shrimp with a Thai coconut broth. We're down to 11. Yeah. Oh, my God. Who's leaving the Master of Kitchen next? Uh, I think Cowboy Mike. Cowboy Mike. Yeah. Why? Uh, I just don't know if he has that passion to be a Master Chef. I know that he loves cooking, and I know he has a passion for food, but being a Master Chef is so much more than that. Good luck. Thank you, Chef. Cowboy Mike, what's How going on? Hey, Chef. How are you guys? You're going to make a lobster? Roasted lobster tails. With a You're going to roast the lobster tail on this? I'm going to start it in a little bit of water and then throw it in there with a little garlic and butter. And then wow. Make sure so there's 11 of you here. Who's going home today? David Martinez is going home. David today. Martinez. Great. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, guys. Something's burning in the oven, guys. What is that? Oh, it's, uh, I made a smoker. Made a smoker? Looks like you made a mess. So no pizza? No pizza. That's, that's where my mind was. I just said I don't want to make a pizza. Taste that. Monty, where's your dough? My dough is in the oven already. Really? What are you making? I'm making a soda bread. I make it for my son all the time. A soda bread? Well, I'm going to make a pureed carrot soup with a touch of ginger and lemon zest. Soup and soda bread. Yeah. Good all luck. Right. Thank you. Thank you. 15 minutes to go. Oh. Tanya, That's we are all over the place. What are you doing? I have this roasted vegetable dish, seared off my lamb, finished it in the oven. The lamb? It's still raw in the middle, yes, and then you're going to fry it in a pan. Anything you've got in terms of flavor from that stone yes, is gone. 55 minutes gone, five minutes to go. Wait to see David Martinez's dish. Yeah. He's making a sauce out of 150 juniper berries in a broth. Cowboy Mike, I think, like Martinez, is all over the place. Yeah. I think he's in a complete panic. I think that uh, he didn't know how to make a pizza dough. No, Very no, nervous no, for him. Monty, he threw the carrots on there. And she's now roasting the carrots and blend them into a carrot soup. I mean, completely all over the place. I'm definitely. Ah! What was that? What the hell was that? Uh, this thing. Did you put water in the oven? What is in there? Uh oh. What happened? You burnt the bread? Monty just burnt her bread. If she can salvage it, she'll be good. But she looks like she's in trouble. <laughs> Minutes to go. Not going home today. Uh oh. What happened? You burnt the bread? Go, go slow, go slow, go slow, go slow. Holy freak out, Batman. This is my main dish. I can't just present them a bowl of soup. <laughs> Ninety seconds to go. Tali, where we at? Got my pizza in the oven. Hopefully, it can like start cooking fast enough. Okay, why don't you try to clean your station? I know, I know. All right, come on, clean up, clean up. Everyone wants to make the top ten. The pressure is definitely on. Hurry up, guys! Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and stop. Hands in the air. Well done. <gasps> Good. That was a fascinating 60 minutes. Right, let's start. Mike, please come forward. I'm not proud of my dish, but I hope that I've done enough with the pizza stone that I can kind of just skimp by on this one. I would have loved to have given you a pizza. 
Really? If you told me to guess what piece of equipment you were given to cook with, I think we'd be here for hours before sure. I ever got to the idea of a pizza stone. I wish that I could remember my dough ratios for pizza, because I, I would have done a pizza. The lobster, when it flakes like that, I mean, it's, mm -hmm. it's like you found a way to make it, like, dehydrated. I mean, you know someone's leaving today, right? Yep, I, mean, I do. <laughs> I just blanked out. All right. Sorry, Chef. How can a stone beat you? No excuse, it just did, Chef. This is your worst performance. You didn't remember a dough recipe of any kind? I just drew a blank. Yeast, flour, salt, water. It's pretty simple, right? Yeah. You drew a blank. Hope there's not a blank space at your cooking station tomorrow. I hope not to. Hell yeah, I'm nervous. Good job, Becky, you know? But what can I do, you know? My only hope at this point is that somebody else screwed up worse than I did. Next up, the girl who had a huge advantage coming into this challenge. Becky, let's go. Hello, judges. The only person in the competition who had a deep fryer. Right, what is that? I did a tempura style fried shrimp topped with yuca chips and then a curry and shrimp stock infused broth. Um, it's delicious. The shrimp you've nailed, it's refreshing. It's got that kind of sort of lightness to it, um, which is not generally associated to a fryer. Good Thank job. Thank you guys. Thank you. All right, next up, please, Christine. I decided to go with an Indian-inspired flatbread. I topped it with some chicken that I rubbed with curry powder and topped it with a fried egg. The idea that if it grows together, it goes together. All these flavors found in the same parts of the world. I think it's a very well-conceived and constructed dish. Thank you. Next is Monty. I know that Monty is a single mother and she does raise her kin, all this stuff, but this isn't like the best budget cooking mom's show, you know? She's not a master chef. How do you make soup on a pizza stone? I roasted carrots on a pizza stone and I pureed them. I made soda bread on the pizza stone as well. I thought about what I would cook for my son and I on a rainy day and I would cook soda bread with a soup. I love the soda bread. Thank you, sir. It has a depth of flavor. Every ingredient makes sense. And I would like to, on a rainy day, eat that whole bowl. Congratulations. Dude, thank Good. you. The soup's delicious, but the bread is phenomenal. Great job. Thank you. I mean, are you really doing this because you know it, or is it a fluke? No, I'm not a fluke, sir. Well done. Thank you, sir. Really well done. Thank you, guys. It feels amazing, obviously. And I really wish my son Danger was here so I could try to make him eat some carrot soup. All right, next up, please, David. Go, David. What did you make? I roasted the potatoes in the pizza stone. I did the bacon in the pizza stone, and I did the uh, lobster on the pizza stone as well. This looks really bad. It almost looks like some kind of soup, but then you got like this big old long piece of bacon that looked like it just fell in it from someone's breakfast plate. Yeah, it's a mess. Come on, Dave. I'm supposed to eat this? Really? You know, watching you cook this was just a letdown. We're gonna go from 11 down to 10. 
And this is what you bring? Coke. This is the most important dish of your life, guys. You see this? This is Just got real. <laughs> this is not good. Holy I am going home today. We're going to go from 11 down to 10. And this is what you bring. Coke. This is the most important dish of your life, guys. You see this? This is Dave Martinez is like the biggest joke. As a matter of fact, I mean, why is he even here? David, you've had some pretty monumental dishes and you just fell a thousand foot with nothing underneath it. It's a great shame. You know, sometimes planes crash and that's what happens. Tali, stay there for a minute. Just, just step back. Look at the mess. I try to put it all in one space. It's not in one space. It's from there all the way down and all over the place. Look at the cupboards. I don't. I Let don't. me tell you one more thing. Okay. If you were in any of our kitchens, yes, sir. you'd have been fired six months ago. Yes, sir. <sighs> that is a disaster. Tally, bring it up. All right. What is that? It's a flatbread with duck and three cheeses of provolone, mozzarella. I made a sauce out of creme fraiche, uh, chives, onion powder, garlic powder, and... And it's served on a bed of raw flour, right? That was not my intention. My intention was to roll, my, roll out my flatbread and get it into the oven. Yep. I mean, here's the thing. You work in a mess, you produce a mess. I'm struggling to identify what the hell you're doing. I really am. And the last dish. Tanya, please. Hi, Chef. Hi. What is it? I wanted to do something uh, Mediterranean, so I did an olive cumin seed flatbread, um, roasted lamb lollipops, a roasted vegetable combination, and a roasted garlic yogurt. The dough is still doughy and very raw. You can't be happy with that. I'm lost for words. That's dreadful. Dreadful. The eggplant is raw. Bitter. And the lamb is dry as anything she shoved it in a pan. Is there raw whole garlic cloves in here? Yeah, it's raw. When you go out to eat, I give you whole cloves of raw garlic to eat? No, chef, they don't. We're here to judge a contest. We're not here to eat raw flour or raw garlic. When you give us crap like that to eat, it gets to be almost kind of personally offensive. You understand that? Yes. Not only am I advising you to step up your cooking game, I'm also advising you to have a little respect. With all the dishes tasted, the judges must choose tonight's three worst dishes. From these, at least one home cook will leave the Master Chef Kitchen. Man, that was a disaster. I mean, honestly. <clears throat> huh? Tanya, Tally, Who would have thought that that would have been so hard? Extraordinary. Pizza. <laughs> Stunned. I got my ass kicked on this one. I mean, straight up from the beginning. I didn't try to give him no excuses. I just screwed up. And I probably deserved to go home for it. God, they're harsh on you, man. I wish I hadn't done this dish. So the just... bread was way undercooked? What'd you roll it with? I didn't. 
but yours didn't go in the trash. Damn near close. I just feel bad for Tolly, man. I tore him up. <sighs> oh, man, Becky picked a good one to screw us over on. <laughs> That was not our best performance in a challenge. But there were some highlights. One great dish that stood out for all the right reasons. That dish belongs to. Well done, Monty. Thank you. If you think I'm a fluke, I am going to laugh my way all the way into the MasterChef crown. Now to the worst dishes of the night. The first dish. Please step forward. Tanya. Oh, I don't want to go home. I want to make the top 10. The next disastrous dish. David, please step forward. I think I will be walking out of the doors here in T minus 10 seconds. And the third terrible dish. Tolly's had a lot of chances, and I feel like his nine lives are pretty much up. Please, God, pick Tolly. Please step forward. Cowboy Mike. I'm not going to give up hope at this point, but I know that, you know, there's a good chance that I'm possibly going home. Tanya, David, and Mike, you know those dishes were bad. Mike, step forward, please. You entered this competition on a horse, but your food made the real impact on us. Blew us away. And we were expecting you to continue that climb and, and outsmart your competition. But that pizza stone was abused. It's time for you to head back. Mike, step forward, please. A 40-year-old father from Georgia that has a big heart, but that pizza stone was abused. It's time for you to head back to Georgia. Your time is done in Master Chef. Thank, Thank you. you. You keep that food dream burning high. Thank you very much. For the Honor. Thank you. You did your sister proud, too. Thank All you right? very much. No, it's a big Thank deal. You. All right, you did great. Thank you. Thank you. Before you leave, who's going to win MasterChef? Without a doubt, Chef, this woman cooks better with no sight than all we do with vision. So I'm saying Christine. Christine. Thank you. I can't Thank wait to buy your book, babe. To make it this far is a huge accomplishment for me. I lost my sister in September, and I was doing this in her name. I'm very proud. I know she's proud. And I know my family at home is, is extremely proud. They're going to welcome me with open arms. I know they'll be glad to see me. OK. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The top ten best amateur Woo! cooks in the country. Come on. How did I make it through this? How does that feel? Really great. <laughs> Insane. Well, that ten is about to become the top nine. Double elimination? What's... what? Tanya, you are the youngest in the competition. And sometimes you cook like you're one of the most mature. But that pizza stone 
through you way off. Yes, chef. David, passionate, talented, but it was just puzzling. Watching you cook, it was just a mess. The person leaving MasterChef and heading back home. Dave Martinez has to go. He has to. Is... Tanya, your time is done. Thank you, In MasterChef. Congratulations. Trust me, you may not have your hands on the title, but what you have got is a future in food. Thank you so much. You're bubbly, you're exciting, you're very young. Continue on that journey, because you connect with food. Thank you. Well done, my darling. Thank you so much. It's been great having you. Oh, my God. I cannot believe you made it. This has been a crazy journey. Before Master Chef, I was so scared to acknowledge what I wanted in life. And coming here it just shows me that you take big risks, you get big rewards. And the fact that I made it this far into the top 10, it's massive. I'm so proud of myself. Next time on Master Chef, oh an ominous sea urchin makes its Master Chef debut. Oh my God, I hope that's not your brain. And the catch of the day sends a tidal wave through the kitchen. What? I'm definitely swimming with sharks right now. Everyone can go home as far as I'm concerned. And another home cook is sunk. No. It's Master Chef, not Master Bait. I hope that fish doesn't take you down today. One potato, two potato.